Hi, I'm Paula from Fellowship Emporium and today I'm going to show you something new. I've got this lovely old set of chest of drawers and I've got some Wedgwood Green and I've got some Ivory Tower. And I've got one of these paint rollers which has a lovely pattern of um, dandelion heads I believe. And I'm going to show you how it works because it's quite cool and it's quite scary. <laughs> But we're going to have a go and I'll show you how you do it and I'm sure you're going to have a go. The first thing that we've got to do is give it a good clean, get the hardware off and then I'm going to cover the whole chest of drawers in the Wedgwood Green so it'll be a solid colour so you don't need to wash that because that's a bit boring. So we'll come back when all of that's painted, cleaned up and done and then I'll show you the roll of it. Alright, see you then. Hi, right, I'm going to show you a problem we've encountered. This was quite an old set of chest of drawers and it had a lot of wax on it. So when we cleaned it, we'd sanded it down just to give it a bit of a key. And what's happened as soon as we've painted, this has had one coat. And as you can see, it's all the bleedings come through. Um, it didn't show before the paint, but it showed as soon as we've started painting. So, options. Um, I could do a more mottled effect, a ragging effect like I've shown in other videos and that would cover it, so that's one option. I could abandon pale green and do some dark colour paint and that's another option, that would cover it. But I really like the pale green and I want it to be pale green. So, I have used some finishing coat and I have put two coats of finishing coat on here and then tried a coat of paint on top it's still showing through. So I've now put three coats of finishing coat on this one and as you can see I'm hoping that when I get to putting the paint on it's going to be enough to cover it because that's definitely looking better after two coats but I'm going to show you because even though this is looking really bad what to expect. When I put the finishing coat on it actually seems to draw it out more so it initially looks worse and you think oh my goodness stop 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 but this is okay it's just you working out whether one two three coats is going to be enough to cover it and whether that's the option you want to take because you might not want to do three coats you might just want to do a more patterned effect to cover it so I'm going to carry on and give this three coats drying it pro properly and thoroughly in between with my hair dryer and look, can you see that? How brown and yuck that is looking. That's not acceptable as a chest of drawers, is it? <laughs> On any level. So, we'll come back once we've done this rep reparation and hopefully see a lovely Wedgwood Green chest of drawers. Okay, see you in a bit. Hi, oh, right, as you can see, it is looking a lot better. She shall go to the ball. I was determined and it has taken some time and some patience and, it, and determination frankly. Um, so I just wanted to run through um, a couple of pointers just for future reference for you guys when you, when you run across this problem. This has literally had three, in some cases four layers of finishing coat to, to get rid of that very heavy staining. That's about as bad as it gets in staining wise. But gradually as we were getting through we've got a couple spots here, just a little bit left of staining and so what I shall do is put a tiny bit of finishing coat just on the areas that are problems so it doesn't necessarily mean I've got to do it over all of it over and over and over again so that's the first point you can gradually as you're getting on top of it and in control of it just touch up the areas that need doing second point if you decided at this point to abandon the light colour and paint it in a dark grey, a black or whatever, that will cover it but it won't solve the problem. So it will cover it but if you then thought right I'm going to paint white over the top of it, the bleed will then show again because it's not blocking it, it's just blinding it. So that's the second point. Third point, my decision now based on what has happened um, in terms of finishing it when it's done is very much whatever you do don't finishing coat it because finishing coat is likely to draw it all back out again so we've we've blocked it we've painted it so now I will absolutely be waxing it on top to protect it and I will not be using finishing coat so those are three points which you can take with you and use in the future in the meantime I've got those two little bits to do these three drawers are looking fab and these are the only the drawers that I'm going to do the rollering on so I've now got to go and set that up 
and then we'll show you how we do it because that's the fun bit. All right, let's move it. Right, I'm going to show you how we're going to prepare for this roller situation. The squeaking that you can hear in the background is new introduction to the house. Come on, darling. Let's say hello. This is Noodle. And he's very cute, but he likes to be with his mummy. Okay, I'm going to let you have a little run around now. Okay, and then our mummy can get on the video. There you go. Right, back to this. So you can order these um, on eBay. They're called um, painting rollers and it, they come as two parts. So you've got a plain sponge bit and then the printing bit. And there's lots of different designs that you can get. This one is um, dandelion head. So in order to start, I've poured some ivory tower into a pot and I'm going to put some water in with it as well because you need to water it down. So not loads, but it needs to be quite runny. So I'm, it's not about changing the colour, it's just getting the consistency to be able to soak up in the sponge in the roller. Yeah. Right, it's nice and runny. So now, before I attach the roller, I've nicked a bit of wood from my husband's garage. Hopefully it's not crucial. I didn't ask him this morning, so sorry about that bit. I'm going to pour a little bit onto my wood in a roll like this. Okay, and I'm going to use my roller back and forth all the way around to soak it up. It's going to take a little while because when you're rollering, especially if you're doing a much bigger piece than a, a drawer, you don't want it to run out of paint halfway. So you want to keep rolling it, you can see it gradually soaking into the sponge until it's gone down a little way. So as soon as I've it's soaking it up nicely, so then when I've done that I pour a little bit more on. And I'm doing it all on one side for a reason, which will all become clear in a minute. So there we are. So I'm going to keep doing that until I've got a good, I don't know, 0.5 mils down. So that's that stage, so I shall do that and carry on with that in a minute. So I'll now show you the other section to this roller kit. Um, it, This one is of dandelions, you can get them anywhere um, on eBay. This one I have marked with a sharpie pen, a plus on one side and a negative on the other. The reason for that is that when we are, we're not going to do just one row, we're going to be doing one row next to another row, next to another row, next to another row. So to line it up, that's what we use the plus and the negative for. So one row, we, are, we will start, if this is our edge, with the plus at the top, bang directly upwards, and we'll do the roll. Then we move across, and we'll do it with the negative at the top, right next to it, and roll. And that that's how it will line up. So that's the reason for it. So once we've um, established our um, plus and our negatives, we need to then make sure that we've got it the right way up. So that's the reason I've left the side of the wood um, clear, so that we can test it. So it fits onto the closest one that means it's going to have the most paint rubbing on it and then this just literally lifts into it clips in so you have a bit of a fiddle and it's not particularly a clean job but obviously it is only chalk paint so it's going to wash off there. so it's a bit of a loose fit so now I'm going to roll making sure that all of it is covered. You see? So this sponge is loading. And now I'm going to do a test run on my black one, on my blank one, sorry, just to make sure it's the right way up. There we are, it's the right way up. So that's all good. So now I can move to my 
piece of furniture and make us start. So we'll go and show you that in just a sec. Right, so I'm going to start. I've lined all of the drawers up together. Thank you. Then he gets me. Right, so I've got my negative. It doesn't matter whether you start with a negative or a plus, as long as you're aware which one it is. So here's my negative. I'm lining it right up. And then I start the rolling. As lifting it up as neatly as I can. Right the way to the end. Look at that. Cool. So the next line has got to be plus because I started with a negative. I'm going to have to come back in a minute when I've sorted the top <laughs> Right, so now I've got a plus and I'm going to go up in exactly the same way. There we go. So now I'm going to find a negative. It's gone wrong there, but we can touch that up. I'm going to find a negative. So this is the last one. As you can see, I've got to lift it up just slightly because you don't want the big fat roller rolling on it underneath. And plus, it's getting harder and harder to see what my plus and my negative is, so I've only got a tiny bit to fill here, so I don't know if it will work or not. There, I might have to touch up a little bit of green there. But you get the gist, it's come out pretty good, that's pretty good for a first, as I say, it's scary, you've only got one shot at it, but it doesn't mean it's the end of the world, because if little bits haven't come up, come in, we can now use a little fine brush to touch it up, although generally speaking this doesn't need a lot, it's come out really pretty good and that's all about loading it in the first place. Obviously we're going to need to dry it and then rub back some of these the areas that have bodged a bit, but that's not the end of the world, we can just add a bit of green in and it will look fabulous. So we'll tidy it up, these bits, and then put it into the um, drawers and, and let you see what it finished like and then we've just got the hardware to do and a wax and we're nearly there. But how effective is that? You can even use these on fabric. So you can lay out a piece of fabric, although lots of the videos that I've seen, they've actually pinned the fabric to a wall and gone up the wall that way. So I've never tried that, but I think it looks really pretty. All right, we'll come back when we've uh, done the bits we've said. You can see, it looks amazing, really, really chuffed, really, really pretty. We decided to replace the handles with these lovely, um, I don't know what you call them, knobs. Uh, all different patterns look great. We've done a clear coat of wax all over it. I have patched up what was uh, wrong with that on the top, but if it hadn't have completely done it, I'd have put some white wax over the top and I think that would have covered it as well, but it has covered it, so I'm fine. So it's all finished. What a simple, simple job. And the important thing, of course, at the end of it is that you wash out your roller and your sponge really thoroughly so that you can use it again and again and again. But I think the... Uh, product in itself would last you a very long time it's a good good product so i hope you have a go thank you for supporting me please subscribe to my channel and like my page which is www.facebook.com forward slash the emporium furniture which will take you straight to photo emporium thank you bye, -bye.